Welcome back to another mini documentary. This time about Flumeride, but you already know that because of the title. Before I start talking about Flumeride, there is something that I do need to tell you. By the end of this video, there is a huge spoiler. But don't worry, watch the full video. I will let you know before the spoiler comes. In November 1971, the CEO by the time, Olof Calderon, suggested to the board that they should look into buying a new log flume ride to the park for the 50 year anniversary. In February 1972, Lisa Berry, together with the architect Simon Henningsen, had made a layout for the new log flume ride coming to the park. Lisa Barry showed the layout for Aero Development, the company that will later on build the ride, and they agreed to be able to fit Flume Ride and the other new ride for this year, Barnbåtarna, um, that would be children's boats directly translated to English. They needed to relocate the ferris wheel in the park. The first estimate was that Flume Ride would cost between 3 and 5 million Swedish crowns. That would be, today, between 25 and 35 million crowns and in euros around three and a half million euros. It had now grown up to seven million Swedish crowns though. That today would be around 50 million crowns or five million euros. The reason for this was the complexity of building the ride. Lise Bayern Aero decided early on to use the terrain in the park to build the ride. This made it more complicated. They also decided to build a bigger station to be able to have higher capacity for Flume Ride. By the end of February 1973, it was announced that the ride maybe wouldn't open in April as planned. This was due to delivery problems of pumps from Finland. Luckily though, the pumps did arrive and on 25 of April 1973, when Lisa Berry celebrated 50 years, Flume Ride opened. With the ride finally done, the final cost was now actually 8 million Swedish crowns. That is today around 60 million Swedish crowns or 6 million euros. Let's talk about what Flume Ride actually is and some facts of course. Flume Ride is a waterlogged Flume Ride from the company Aero Development. Aero themselves went bankrupt in 2002. It takes almost two days to fill up the ride. Two days! That is a long time. The 610 meter long track is home to 1.2 million liters of water. 1.2 million liters of water. That's a lot of milk cartons if you would measure it like that. The pump capacity of Flume Ride is 90,000 liters per minute. That is 5.4 million liters per hour. That, my friends, is a lot of water and some crazy pump capacity. Cool facts, right? 140 people, I don't have that many fingers, can ride at the same time in the 28 boats that is shaped like logs. Every log can take between four and five persons. Flume Ride has two lift hills and two major drops. The first drop is 9 meters in drop height and the second and last one is 14 meters. There we go! It's also in this last drop that you will reach the maximum speed of the ride, which is 60 kilometers per hour. There is some really interesting parts with Flume Ride though, and we're gonna start talking about them now. And those are not actually about the ride themselves or the ride experience. It's about things surrounding the ride, you could say. And here's the first one, get ready. Lisa Bay was not even allowed to build Flume Ride. This is, in my opinion, quite a fun story. Since Lisa Bay is owned by Gothenburg City, it should be the first to follow rules and permits, right? But for some reason, this was not done at all with Flume Ride. After the opening of Flume Ride, neighbors started to complain. And with these complaints, somewhat of a scandal aroused. Lise Bay had built parts of Flume Ride in a dotted land. That means that you are under no circumstances allowed to build on that place. It doesn't end there. 
Lise Berg never even sent the applications in to build Flumride. And on top of all this, the chairman of the Gothenburg Building Committee, Uno Alsvik, was also a chairman of the board of Lise Berg. Everything that could be wrong went wrong with Flumride and the permits and using or following laws and permits. Okay then, so why is Flumride still in the park then? What happened was that it was decided that to evaluate the situation with Flumride, it needed to do a full season and then see if there was any noise complaints. And also Lisebay had to promise to build a tunnel in parts of the ride to keep the noise down if there was any complaints. As most of you know, there is no tunnels, so there was no co noise complaints. Tunnels could be cool though, so consider it Liseberg. And for the summer season of 1974, Liseberg finally got their permit for Flume Ride and it was now legal. The following is an exact quote from the very amazing website www.lisepedia.se. This is a true story. After the premiere season 1973, Lisebergs management wanted to prevent water splashes in Flumride. In a letter to Dean Shallon at Arrow Development, the company that delivered Flumride to Lisebergs, Lisebergs CEO Bo Schintorp, or Schintorp described the problem. The frequency of rides on Flumride has largely met our expectations. However, during the season we have seen and heard that some, slightly older and perhaps also well-dressed, spectators avoid a Flumride ride due to the risk of water splashes on clothes and hair. This mainly applies to ladies. This is a major problem that will be even greater in the future if we do not almost completely eliminate water splashes on the occupants. Lisebergs hope was that Arrow would solve the problem, for example through new boats, so that before the 1974 season it could be informed to the audience that Flume Ride is now completely splash free. This never happened, fortunately. End of quote. With this I do not agree. I freeze a lot and I very much freeze when I get wet. So I love Flume Ride, but I don't want to get wet. So uh, protection over me would be nice or have a system. Lisebay, this is an idea for you. Have something that you can make me less wet when it's cold because it's not always warm. We live in Sweden, we don't live in Florida. I'm sorry. And yes, I am talking to you guys that rides Flume ride on Halloween season. The last day of operation you need to go on Flume ride. It's freaking cold. I am sorry for for my choice of words here, but you are riding Flume ride. And if Lisebay were to open it on Christmas, I promise you that you will ride it. I am so sure that you will still ride it. And that, my friends, is crazy. Stop riding Flume ride when it's so cold. 8th of October 2006, a woman panicked on Flume Ride and held on to a fence on top of the last drop. She fell out of the boat, lost her grip and slided down the hill. The next boat hit her in the head before the ride operators managed to stop the ride. Luckily, the woman rehabilitated really fast and nothing worse than that happened. Okay, this last thing I'm going to talk about the Flume Ride is very fun in my opinion so uh, the thing is there is no pictures to prove this and to show it but there this is from Lisebergs website Lisepedia again so, so it's a true story and also if anyone have pictures please let me know in the comments or send me an email at info at in the last day of operation 25 of september 1977 flume ride turned into skum ride in swedish or foam ride as it would be in english this stunt was not pulled by Liseberg though, it was pulled by some students from Chalmers University. Again, I quote Liseberg. A number of students from Chalmers University pour shampoo and detergent into the water. Consciously or unconsciously, the dosage becomes insanely large, which results in the entire ride foaming over. Imagine Flume Ride foaming over, that's fantastic, I'm sorry, it is, it is amazing. The logs take in plenty of water and the passengers are flooded with both foam and water. 
boats got stuck and the safety system is deactivated. Okay, so now we need to get serious. This is dangerous. Don't do this. I'm not joking. This was not a good thing. Pure luck. No one was injured, the police says. Lisa Barry reports the incident to the police, but after talks with Chalmers and the res responsible students, this report is withdrawn, luckily. It was written that wh whoever does something similar in the city will have to leave Chalmers. The students were extremely remorseful, says Lisa Barry's CEO, Bo Shintorp. However, Chalmers Student Union will be liable for compensation. Lisebergs cost for the damage are estimated to around 29,000 crowns by the time, but the management is content with 10,000 crowns in compensation. Again, if you do have pictures or even better, videos of uh, foam ride, please, please let me know and send them to me. That would be amazing to be able to share here on the channel. Flume Ride is still with us in the park today and is performing great. And as I just told you, you ride it whenever. Doesn't matter if it's minus 22, you would ride Flume Ride if it was open. But we should tell this ride to put some skates in the bottom of the boats and you can just skate around. It is very soon, almost a year, until Lisa Barry celebrates 100 years. And with that, of course, Flume Ride will celebrate 50 years. With that said, there is something that I want you to know. This is a spoiler alert. If you don't want to know anything else, turn off the video now. We have found official documents stating that Lisa Barry actually have bought or ordered or reserved a new water log flume ride from the company Intamin. Intamin, for example, have built Luke and Balder, so, so Lisa Barry has been working quite a lot with them. This is real documents. We don't say it's gonna happen, but the documents are real and it really looks like at some point in the future Lisa Barry will replace flume ride. And it makes sense, it's 50 years old, Arrow development that built uh, Flume Ride are bankrupt since many years back. If Lisbeck want to repair any part of Flume Ride, they need to special order the parts. What we think is that in less than a couple of years, Flume Ride will be scrapped and a new flume will be built. The thing is, this is nothing to be sad about because an Intamin Flume Ride are very cool. They are really, really good and they have some really cool elements. And it looks like this one has two. We're gonna have that too. In the document it states that it's gonna have some pretty cool parts. I can tell you that you will go forwards and backwards according to the document, so that would be cool in a water ride. I need to remind you though, I do not talk for Lisa Bay. This I took from a document, an official document that I found. It's a procurement and an official tender from Lisa Bay. so this any one of you can find. Thank you so much for watching this mini documentary about Flume Ride. Please like the video comment, subscribe and hit the bell icon. And don't forget to let us know what video you want to see next. And last but not least, press this video because pressing here will give you more cool videos, I promise.